Hello, everyone. I want to thank you for being present uh, for today's press conference on SR 800, addressing the humanitarian crisis that is occurring in Tigray, Ethiopia. We will start with an introduction from Senator Jackson, and we are glad to be accompanied by other elected officials in solidarity today, in addition to the Atlanta Jewish community. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I want to begin first by thanking uh, Fana and Hassan, who are GLBC interns, who brought this issue to me and asked if I would help them to highlight the importance of this issue. And so to Fana and Hassan, our great young people who are um, of Ethiopian descent, who've really said, we have to say something about this in these halls, in these places. Um, I want to thank you all for bringing the, this to us. And then I also, before I begin my official remarks, want to thank the people, all of the people here, who have come out. in honor of their family in order to highlight this issue. Uh, friends, we have gathered here today to recognize the millions of people who are suffering in silence, the families, the friends, and loved ones, many of whom are my constituents. I'm grateful to be joined by fellow legislators, by constituents, by members of the Tigray community of Atlanta, which is based in my home district District 41, and the many, many Georgia residents who were here in solidarity. This session, I sponsored Senate Resolution 800, calling for the unfettered humanitarian access to the millions of people of Tigray region of Ethiopia. The people of Tigray have been denied food. They have been denied water. They suffer in darkness. They have been cut off from the world. For some context, Tigray is a state located in the northern part of Ethiopia, which represents nearly 7 million people. As far as we know, there are currently 2 million people displaced within the country and over 60,000 Tigrayan refugees in Sudan. On November 4th of 2020, war was declared on Tigray, and ever since, the people of Tigray have been terrorized. This is an ongoing genocidal war, which has destroyed the region and caused great suffering, both to those who are there and to their relatives who are here in the state of Georgia. If you are of a certain age, you may recall the images of children who were going hungry in Ethiopia. These were haunting images that became the face of starvation. Seeing these starving children moved us, and it moved our world to take action. Uh, since then, many of the Tigrayan friends resettled in Georgia as refugees in the 1980s and 90s, fleeing the famine and civil war in their country and making this great state their new home. Now, some three decades later, here in 2022, we are seeing history repeat itself. Today, the families of our Georgia constituents and many millions others in Ethiopia are living in famine-like conditions and are at risk of perishing due to the starvation and the deliberate destruction of their health care system. According to most recent reports, between 80 and 90 percent of the Tigray hospitals and clinics are no longer functioning. The Tigray people in Ethiopia have no access to humanitarian aid for over 16 months. Aid workers have been killed they face communication blackouts. My constituents, people here, they do not know whether their relatives are alive. They cannot call them or text them. They cannot email them. Uh, 
most of us can never imagine how horrifying this experience must be. In spite of the ongoing suffering, sexual violence, and mass displacement in the humanitarian crisis of Tigray, despite all of that, it has received relatively little attention from our news media, from our international community, and very little attention under this great gold dome. But today, that changes. Today, we as members of the General Assembly are calling for the immediate restoration of electricity, of telephones, and internet service, which will be needed to facilitate the restoration of their health care system. Today, we are calling for the unfettered humanitarian access to the millions of people in the Tigray region of Ethiopia who are facing weaponized starvation. And we today are calling for the support for vulnerable populations, including refugees, internally displaced persons, victims of gender-based violence, and those who are displaced by this genocidal war in Ethiopia. We condemn the human suffering and displacement of the Tigrayan people. We condemn the ongoing violence and the egregious human rights abuses. Today, we stand in solidarity with the people of Tigray and with the Ethiopian immigrant and refugee community around the world and here in Georgia. Tigray should no longer suffer in silence. We see you, and today and forevermore, we stand with you. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for being with us this morning. I am Senator Elena Parent, and I want to begin my remarks by expressing my heartache for the Tigrayan people and their families who are here in the state of Georgia. As leaders, we must stand for the basic rights of all citizens, and particularly for those who are facing injustice and oppression. Earlier this session, I introduced SR 668, a resolution that recognizes April 2022 as Genocide Prevention and Awareness Month at the state capitol and throughout the state of Georgia. I believe that it is imperative as members of this body and citizens of this state that we commit ourselves to becoming educated about the history of previous genocides and the occurrence of contemporary genocides. And we must focus our attention on the specter of genocide so that policies, strategies, and programs geared toward combating these evils can be developed and implemented. Further, we must ensure that we are making a conscious effort to commemorate the victims of genocide so that their unjust suffering may never be forgotten. And indeed, that we may prevent death during ongoing genocides and prevent future genocides. In Tigray, an estimated 500,000 people have died due to a combination of starvation and killings over the last 16 months. This amounts to nearly 1,000 people per day due to man-made famine and war, a truly unfathomable toll. War has prevented the passage of humanitarian aid and as a result, starvation is being effectively weaponized against an estimated 7 million men, women, and children. The people of Tigray also remain under a, a communications blackout, cut off from the rest of the world. It's hard to even fathom not being able to 
reach one's family in these conditions for over a year. And my heart is with those standing with us today and those grieving across the Tigrayan diaspora. Our goal is to amplify the suffering of those in the Tigray region in order to advocate against the gross violations of human rights occurring and ensure that justice is provided. In 2011, the President of the United States declared the prevention of mass atrocities and genocide to be a, quote, core national security interest and core moral responsibility of the United States and ordered the creation of the Atrocities Prevention Board in 2012. Thus, as members of the Georgia Senate, we are calling for immediate unfettered humanitarian access across Tigray to allow for the delivery of life-saving food aid, medicine, and the full restoration of telecommunications, power, and banking services. We are in full support of the UN's ongoing human rights investigations in the region. We stand today with our Tigrayan constituents here in Georgia and their families. And now I would like to welcome to the podium individuals directly impacted by the ongoing genocide in Tigray. Thank you, Senator Jackson and Senator Parent for standing in solidarity with my family and my people. In 1983, my father resettled in Houston, Texas before making a home in Georgia's District 41 as a refugee fleeing violence and famine in Ethiopia's civil war. At the time of his arrival in the United States, he immediately began advocacy work with the grassroots Tigrayan organization that had a chapter in Houston and spent hours of his days recording VHS footage of the BBC's jarring report on the 1983 to 1985 Ethiopian famine. He distributed the tapes to local community and religious leaders in the area, hoping they would rush to donate and spread awareness. Almost 40 years later, and I am unfortunately in a similar predicament as my father, exhausting every possible option to advocate for my family deliberately being starved in Tigray. Many people, as Senator Jackson mentioned, who were old enough to remember the famine, still have the images of extremely malnourished children etched into their minds to this day. Although the famine began in 1983 due to counterinsurgency strategies implemented in the northern regions of Ethiopia by the Derg, Ethiopia's communist ruling regime at the time, two years passed before attention in the United States focused on the humanitarian catastrophe taking place. This attention eventually led to prominent individuals in the music industry like Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson to write the song, We Are the World. And it led to the great live aid concert, which garnered millions of dollars intended for African famine relief. If the US government had been aware of conditions on the ground in Ethiopia for some time, it was not until journalists were able to share the stories of the famine that many Americans reacted. Journalist Michael Burke, in particular, managed to capture extensive and graphic footage of the humanitarian crisis unfolding in Ethiopia at the time. And groups all throughout the country also began to look for ways to make an impact on the situation in Ethiopia. For example, in May of 1985, the Los Angeles United School District spent two weeks pitting schools against each other to see which one would wind up on top as the number one fundraiser for money to go towards Ethiopian famine relief. After being faced with graphic images of the famine, it became evident that people across the country understood the crisis in Ethiopia as little more than sending US aid to, to end the maneuverings of the Ethiopian communist regime. 
and this did little to encourage a critical dialogue of U.S. policies and the role that humanitarianism, humanitarianism played in their formulation. No one seemed to ask the critical question of why the U.S. knew about the famine conditions since 82 and chose to stand by as, as the death toll rose. Today, history is quite literally repeating itself in Tigray as the U.S. remains aware of the unfolding humanitarian crisis. I cannot adequately describe the crippling horror of wondering every moment of my day whether my family members have food and if they have starved to death. It is beyond cruel to cut an entire population of people off from the world in the midst of their darkest hours, leaving them unable to advocate for themselves and share the horrors that they face. It is why members of the Tigrayan diaspora, like myself and those gathered here today, have become relentless advocates, willing to do whatever it takes to amplify the suffering of our families and people. It is likely difficult for those of us living here in Georgia to imagine what starvation in the midst of a telecom blackout actually entails, when we live surrounded with more food options and social media apps than we can count. What many people don't realize is that starvation is a slow, painful process that begins with a severe lack of food over prolonged periods that lead the body's resources to be depleted. This results in substantial weight loss and wasting, of the wa wasting away of the body's tissues in which it begins to feed on itself. Eventually, there's nothing left for the body to scavenge except muscle, including the heart muscle. In the late stages of starvation, Many people often experience hallucinations, convulsions, and disruptions in heart rhythm before it eventually stops and they perish. This is happening to innocent children who deserve to learn and play, but are being subjected to a level of cruelty beyond comprehension as the world stands by. Children and their families who are made in the image of God, who have a sense of inherent worth and value that cannot be altered by any human being, and who are worthy of being fought for and advocated for. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being a parent in Tigray right now, watching your child slowly starve to death with no way to help them because you're starving too? An internal report from Tigray estimated that three million individuals in Tigray will perish in the next month if the international community does not intervene to open an, an, a humanitarian corridor with unfettered access to allow the flow of life-saving food and medicine. Although the current Ethiopian regime under Abiy Ahmed declared a humanitarian truce this past week, to many of us fighting for the people of Tigray, it is nothing more than an empty promise from a regime that wants to buy more time. Nearly a week after the humanitarian truce has been declared, aid trucks have still not entered the Tigray region, where even doctors are reported to be fainting of hunger on the job. It is up to the people here in this great state and across the globe, to stand in solidarity with the people of Tigray through advocacy and civic engagement before millions of men, women, and children who are our families unnecessarily die from starvation. Many individuals and organizations who would love to support and care in this great state still don't know about the humanitarian blockade in Tigray and the resulting man-made famine that is completely preventable. And it is why we as a community are grateful for members of the Georgia General Assembly for standing behind Senate Resolution 800 and the awareness that it will bring. Our families cannot wait, and Tigray cannot wait. Thank you. And now, Senator Lester Jackson will take to the podium. Good morning. <clears throat> I'm State Senator Lester Jackson. I stand in solidarity with the members of the General Assembly and those behind me to stop the mass genocide that's happening in Ethiopia. We understand that 500,000 people have died because of this senseless war. We, the, the United States, the protector of freedom and democracy for the world, we're asking now that they intervene. When we look at television, we see, we see the European na nations being advertised about war and what's happening in their home. We see nothing of Ethiopia 
We see nothing of what's happening on African continents. We see nothing what's happening with people of color, the suicides. The, the, we talk about suicides, but we don't talk about genocide that's happening around this world and on the continent of, of Africa. We see now that in Ethiopia, 500,000 people have died. Between 100 to 150,000 have died directly because of the war. Another 50,000 have died because of starvation. And another 150,000 have died because the lack of health care. We're looking at health care as being a, a, a element of this war. We're looking at starvation as being an element of this war. It must stop. We're asking that now the United States must intervene. The UN must intervene. These, the free world must intervene for the protection of lives. When we talk about the United States and when we talk about our freedom. Freedom isn't free. For the people of Ethiopia, we hear you. We understand your plight. We're saying now is enough. We are, we hear your plea, our Senate resolutions, our demand for action for this country, but more importantly, our demand for action for, for the rights, for the privilege, for the people to just live not live in a democracy, but just live, but, but just survive, to have health care, to have access to freedom. So I stand with my members of the General Assembly today to say enough is enough. It's time for us to intervene. Just, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part. Let's start. Enough is enough. I am Georgia State Representative Kim Schofield, representing District 60, parts of Clayton, Fulton, and the city of Atlanta, where the International Airport sits in my district. I have five words for you. Can you hear us? If the United States stands by and does nothing, shame on you. I am filled with emotion that I've been looking for for the last 500 plus days from all around the world and around the United States. And today I am filled and I see what I've been looking for right here in my own beautiful state of Georgia. Senator Jackson, Senator Parent, all of our wonderfully elected officials here today standing with the Tigrayan American community. We want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts because today I feel seen, today we feel seen. So I just want to say thank you once again. As all of the speakers have mentioned, we cannot begin to tell you what it feels like to know that you have the means to take care of your family, but all access to that family is cut off. And as each day passes, a little bit more of that connection is lost until there's absolutely nothing. And so here we are today, not just advocating for our individual families, because it feels so very wrong to even mention our individual families but we are here speaking for the seven million population of Tigray, Ethiopia, that has been silenced. We no longer say we want to be the voice for the voiceless because they have voices. They have been literally silenced. I am one of the refugee children that Senator Jackson spoke of from the 80s. With my mother in hand, and my one-year-old sister on her back, we walked 
following my father who'd already gone to Sudan, as many of the refugees, some 73,000 already have fled in search, not just for a better life, for just life. I remember so vividly as a four or five year old drinking water with sugar just to get that energy to walk one more mile before someone from my community had to pick me up and take me a little bit further on someone else's shoulder. I really connect with that saying, that American phrase that we are all standing on the shoulders of others who brought us here. And for me and for a lot of us, this saying is so literal. So how can I be silent when this is happening again? I've roamed the halls of this beautiful building as a student. I just wish I wasn't here in this capacity, but I will use every last second of the brief time that I'm on this podium to tell you even further about the plight of the man, woman, child that are in Tigray right now and what their lives are like. So when you hear me spout out these numbers, please make that connection that each one of these numbers, there are people and faces behind them that belong to me, that belong to us and so many others across the country and across this world that you may never meet. But here I stand before you and these beautiful faces and these amazing elected officials that say, I stand with Tigray. And I just pray that you make that connection. Let these not just be numbers that you hear from me today. To give you a little bit of perspective on what the people of Tigray are going through. The director of the WHO, the foremost authority on global health, says, nowhere in the world are we witnessing hell like Tigray. For more than a year, the seven million people of Tigray in Ethiopia have been living under a de facto blockade by their own federal government. The army of that federal government, the neighboring Eritrean forces, as well as local militia that are sadly empowered by said federal government. It has been exactly 512 days today Today, 512 days of complete sealed silence, completely being shut out of the world under complete, as Senator Jackson said, telecommunication blackout. So there is no internet, there is no cash, you can't even access your own money and there's absolutely no fuel. 83% of the population does not have access to food. Not just nutritious food, but food. Steady reports are coming out from the country that people are resorting to eating leaves, cactus juice. There is a famine in the region and the only reason is because no one is allowed to go in and no one is allowed to come out. Periodic instances in the past where any food has been made available to enter through humanitarian aid, in the past, aid workers report only 1% of what is needed for the entire 7 million population has been able to get through. That's not even a joke. People in Tigray are dying. There has been a full-fledged attack on Tigray's health system, including aerial and ground attacks on health workers, on patients, on health facilities, medical supplies, ambulances, and equipment. As assessed by humanitarian health workers, 80 to 90 of Tigray's health facilities have been deliberately destroyed by the Ethiopian federal forces, by again the allied neighboring Eritrean army, 
and the local militia. That has meant no band-aids, no gauze, no dialysis fluid, no insulin, not even pain medication for surgeries, not for stitches, not for major surgeries, not for child labor, which a lot of the ambulances take care of in the rural areas. Imagine that. Stitches without painkillers. Now imagine surgery. And I'm not making it up. The footage is out there. It's on CNN. It's on BBC. It's readily available. Chronic illness patients with tuberculosis, diabetes, cancer are also not being treated. And more than likely, a vast majority have already died. Reports of children bleeding out due to barrages of airstrikes on civilian populations and lack of proper medical supplies continue to surface. Again, footage readily available after every drone attack. Attacks on factories and shelters, even near schools, and especially near schools, and especially near refugee camps within the region, as Tigray is known to house Eritrean refugees. Drone attacks by drones supplied by the UAE, Turkey, Iran. People in Tigray are dying. And when you think you've heard the most harrowing parts of this crisis, when you think there possibly can't be more, verified reports of thousands upon thousands of victims of sexual and gender-based violence. Women being assaulted in front of their children, in front of their parents, parents being threatened at gunpoint to sexually assault their children. Sadistic. Metal rods and nails and trash inserted into women's genitalia in their wombs. And Tigrayan women and girls being told by their being told that a Tigrayan womb should never be able to give birth. Insult to injury. Dehumanization, humiliation, 120,000 reported cases of sexual and gender-based violence. And that is the women and girls who are strong enough, who are able to come out and speak their truths. Because a reported, I should say, an estimated 22 plus thousand women are thought to not be strong enough or willing to report it because of cultural norms, because of fear of assaulters, because of trauma of mental. A hundred and twenty thousand women. You can't tell us that rape is not being used as a weapon of war. And that is a war crime. These, again, are just, they're not just numbers. These are our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, my uncles, my uncles in the concentration camps of the capital city. In 2022, concentration camps, imagine. In 2022, in a capital city, in a so-called civilized world. And where are we? Where is the world as the people of Tigray are perishing? And again, an estimated half of an entire civilization said to have perished if something immediate does not happen. If the world does not stand up and say, never again, remember that? Remember? Remember you promised never again? Why doesn't that apply to my family? (laughs) 
Where is the world? And so, I'll finish the way I started. Senator Jackson, Senator Parent, entire General Assembly who's standing literally behind us today. Thank you. We went all around the world and you were here all along saying we see you and we stand with you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I told myself I wouldn't cry today. But these tears are just too hard to hold in. My name is Hassan Mustafa, and I work here at the Georgia State Capitol. But today I'm here not only as a Georgian resident, but as a member of the Tigrayan community of Atlanta. I stand here along the other side of the Tigrayan Americans. I too have family members who have suffered at the hands of this senseless war. I too have lost loved ones during this humanitarian crisis. My grandfather, a man who I dearly loved and adored, passed away last June in Tigray. That feeling is still sore in my heart. The life of many Tigray in diaspora has been difficult. Amidst this man-made famine, this war, all this evil, we sit in complete darkness waiting to hear if our families are okay. Today, I ask that you hear me. You hear my community and you feel the pain that we are going through. There's a communications blackout. Road access remains blocked. Basic needs have not reached our family. The people of Tigray are in complete darkness. This is the world's worst humanitarian aid crisis. Innocent people have starved for over a year now and will continue to do so if t action is not taken now. I could not stress this enough, but I haven't spoken to my family in over six months, some families even longer. We have seen some terrible images and videos come out of the Tigray region, and this is with the communications blackout. Imagine what we will see once this communications blackout is lifted. I'm terrified. I am terrified to see what will come. I pray that my family is safe. I pray that basic needs like food, water, and medical aid reaches the people of Tigray. I pray for those who have lost their lives in this senseless war. It's time for action now. It is time for the international community to speak up today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but today. We need action now. I'm honored to stand here today with the Tigrayan community of Atlanta. I thank all of the elected officials who are here today. And I thank everyone who came to support the people of Tigray. Thank you to our community members who have been trailblazers during this difficult time. Your work does not go unnoticed. This is just one small step in the right direction. And I ask that everyone hears us. Please continue to speak up for the people of Tigray. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll now take any questions from the press. This concludes our press conference. We thank you for being here. We hear you, we see you, and we stand with you. <laughs>